Hey everybody, it's Al with Bobcat. So today I wanted to look at some 3D machining using wireframe. Uh, in the Bobcat software, we have a toolpath called uh, three axis wireframe, and you can use this to drive your tool along a uh, 3D profile. So the first thing we want to look at is setting up our job. So what I have here is a model and this represents the stock that I'll be using. In this case, it's uh, some shaped foam, okay? And uh, we'll run our, uh, we'll create a new job. We're gonna do a milling job on a three axis machine. And the first kind of stock we're gonna use is rectangular stock. And what this will do is look at the, the model that's on the screen and create a minimum maximum uh, containment boundary. So we're going to use that the way that it is and then our zero position I'm just going to pick up one of these corners. It really could be any location but that's the location I'm going to use. Okay so now we have our stock set up as rectangular stock and then we have our zero set up. The next thing I want to do is I want to I have this part profile here this is the part that uh, the profile that I want to machine and I want to machine it through the stock here. So uh, there's a couple of ways that we can do this. In this case, what I'm going to do is project this uh, geometry, this wireframe, which is two axis, uh, it's flat in the XY plane. I'm gonna project that down onto this surface. So I'm gonna do other project curves to surface, uh, chain select that profile, and then I'm gonna project that down onto that surface. Now, when I do that, it actually projected it down onto the solid so you can see that it it generated the profile on the top and bottom so what I'm gonna do is just delete the bottom half of it because I don't need that geometry now you can import this in from your primary CAD package in this example I'm just creating the geometry from within Bobcat so I have my three axis profile uh, it's projected down onto that surface plane I've set up my stocks so now I'm ready to do some machining so I'm going to do mill three axis, I'm going to uh, three axis wireframe, I'm going to select this profile, let's try that again. Okay, so it's not chaining, there's a, a gap or an intersection, so I'm going to um, select it in two groups, let me try again. Okay. So now we have our, our profile. Our machining strategy, we have three axis. Uh, we have a finish and a roughing routine. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna look at, let's, let's do the finish. We'll do a three axis finish. So we'll move that over. We'll set up what our tool is. So we'll say it's a half inch cutter and let's say it has uh, flute length is five inches. Okay, so that's fine. These are our speeds and feeds over here, how fast we're gonna cut. We're gonna go ahead and compute this. And what you're gonna see is that the tool path that is generated is right on the projected geometry. So if we bring up our stock, you can see that the tool path isn't cutting deeper than where the stock geometry is. The other thing you'll notice as well is that the tool is being driven on the, the center line or the center of the tool is gonna follow this profile. So if we were gonna uh, machine this, we would need to offset that profile to accommodate for the cutter, which I'll get to in just a minute. Really what I wanna talk about is how deep it's cutting in Z. So if we go back to our feature here, we have, uh, because we're doing finishing, it's just gonna follow the profile uh, location where it is, and then we could change where it starts cutting from. What we wanna do is remove the finishing routine and we wanna add the roughing routine in. Now, with the roughing routine, what this, uh, what this does is it gives us a step distance and a number of cuts. So if we wanted to take more than one pass to get down to the bottom, um, you can do cut to geometry or you can say cut from geometry. So cut to, cut to geometry means starting from top apart and then cutting down to the geometry level. Uh, cut from geometry means starting from where the geometry is and how far you're gonna step down. So let's say we wanna do step distance is five uh, inches and we wanna take it in one pass. If we go ahead and recompute this, you know, now you can see that the tool path is stepping down. Now five happens to be uh, too much, so let's go ahead and just make this two inches. 
recompute. Now you can see it's taking that in one pass and it's going down five inches. The other thing we could do, maybe like I said, if we wanted multiple passes, we could say number of cuts five, you know, so now it's going to take two inches at a pass and it's going to do it five times. Another way we could do this is if we want to go two inches down, right? So we can say <clears throat> two inches divided by five and then that gives us our increment of cut and then when we recompute this now it's going to take uh, the appropriate number of passes to get down to two inches. So this is how you can use the roughing. Now, you know, like I said, you could offset the profile, you could use the finishing. If you use just the finishing, then you would have the geometry projected to the depth that you wanted it to cut to. If we load up our simulation here, we're going to see that we have our rectangular uh, stock here. And when we run this through the simulation, though it does, um, it does follow the, the path and it cuts it out, but the starting stock that we're beginning with is not a uh, rectangular stock. It's already formed. So what we want to do is tell it we're using a solid model as our stock. So we're going to go back to our stock wizard and we're going to run the stock wizard, but this time instead of rectangular, we're going to choose solid model. And then from there, I'm just going to turn the, the 3D stock on, pick, so, uh, pick solid model. I'm going to pick the model. Once I have it picked, I'm going to leave everything else the same. Now I can turn this off and you can see the stock model is following uh, the 3D shape that we, or the 3D solid we just selected. So now when we run this through the simulation, it's going to better represent actually what's happening at the machine because we're starting with the stock geometry that we would actually be using. So we'll slow this down a little bit and you can see how it's profiling along. Now I don't know if you need to take more than one pass or if you just want to take one pass or not. That's, that's going to depend on your setup. But again, this is uh, just showing how you can use a solid stock to better represent what's happening out at the machine. So this is taking multiple passes to get down to the bottom. What I'm going to do is go back and edit that. I want this to go two inches and I want it to take one pass. I'll recompute. So now I'm going two inches down. I'm going to go ahead and uh, simulate this again. From here I will run, run my simulation so we can see that it's cut along. Now the thing is is that we have this extra material here and really what we want to see is what our finish uh, shape would look like. So you have some tools for that. You can go into, uh, let's see here, one of these tabs and we can remove selected chips and then we can click on the stock that we want to remove and then now as we're viewing the part we see exactly how it is and we've removed that stock. So uh, just a, a quick walk through on three axis profiling based off a of wireframe and also how to use solid stock to better represent what's happening out at the machine. If you guys have any questions or comments, uh, feedback, please reply back to the Facebook uh, the YouTube or whatever thread this video may be posted in. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much, guys.